okay question 7 linear programming in the description box I'll leave links for other questions that I've answered for this question paper um, it's a supplementary exam written in 2024 now this linear programming question they are saying that in a certain week a radio manufacturer makes two types of portable radios okay so the manufacturer is making our radios right but there's two types two types of portable radios now the two types are electrical that's the first type and a battery operated radio so there's two types one is electrical meaning that it could be a case where you plug the radio onto the electrical socket in your household or it's a oh, okay and then the second one is the battery operated so meaning that you need to purchase or buy batteries to operate the radio now let x be the number of electrical so x is for the electrical radios and y is the battery operated radio it represents the number the total number of um, battery operated radios in the sketch below oh in the sketch the shaded area represents the visible region i think what we should do with the feasible region so that it becomes visible to us would be to highlight the area so i'm gonna do that this is the feasible region this is the feasible region is it <laughs> is it visible enough i don't know maybe let's try this let's try this we am shading blue we am grating blue yeah, now this is much more convincing. Okay, I, I, I just want it to pop out. It's not that we can't see it, we can. I just want it to pop out. Just to stand out, no way. Okay. Then 7.1, they are asking us for the constraints of the feasible region in the form or that form using the given sketch. All right. Now, in order to get the, the constraints, what are constraints? We have two types of constraints. Remember, remember, we have the implicit constraints, which are these two. Let me use black onto the paper. The implicit ones are this and this. These are implicit constraints. So they are asking us to give the equations for the constraints uh, they want us to give the equations for the explicit constraints so let me use maybe red yeah let me be use red to highlight the constraints constraints when given a sketch are the lines that you see on the graph these are constraints these lines are what makes the feasible region so we have this we have how many constraints four one two three four constraints so we need to give the equations or find the equations for these constraints how do we do that how do we do that it's not like we are getting them from a statement but we are deriving them right from the sketch so 7.1 so with the linear programming questions is that they can they they can ask you questions in two different ways they can give you the constraints and ask you to plot the graph and shade the feasible region or they can give you the sketch and ask you to give the constraints right it's a vice versa um, kind of thing now since the constraints are straight lines right are straight lines we're gonna be using this form of equation all right okay let me not say we're going to use this one but let me just say since they are straight line equations you have the option to go about using this equation to get the equations for the constraint but this it's gonna create some unnecessary work it's gonna be very tedious and very long looking at the marker location it's gonna be like what what no 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 
okay we're gonna avoid this one right just to make life a bit easier there's also another form of equation involving straight lines right so the straight line equation can actually be written like this right as y equal to mx plus c or it can be written like this let's say a and then let's say b equal to one this is what we call the intercept form of the equation right the intercept form of a straight line equation right so whether a represents the x intercept represents the x intercept value why why a is representing the x intercept because we are dividing um because the a is dividing the x and then b it's obviously gonna be the y intercept value right so we're gonna use the intercept form this equation it's what we call the intercept form it's what we refer to as the intercept form so we're gonna use the intercept form to get the constraints for our equations more especially the slanted ones we have two slanted equations here or constraints the first one it's the one starting from 100 having the the y-intercept of 100 and an x-intercept of 100 this is the first constraint constraint number two that is slanted it's the one that has a y-intercept of 30 and an x-intercept of 60 right so we're gonna be using what these slanted uh, okay we're gonna be using the intercept form to get the constraints or equations for the slanted constraints let's start with the first one so the first one we're gonna say x over a remember a represents the x intercept so looking at the straight line number one the constraint number one what is the x intercept for this one it's a hundred plus now what is the y intercept for the slanted constraint number one it's also hundred one on the other side now remember remember we are dealing with constraints constraints um, they have inequality signs not equal signs right so i'm now replacing this inequality uh, this equal sign with an inequality sign right so how do i decide between greater or equal to or less than or equal to which one do i know with the um which inequality sign do i know that i'm gonna use for this equation okay the answer lies in um as to where the feasible region is located in relation to the constraint so look at constraint number one or equation number one the first equation this equation where is the constraint i mean where is the feasible region um, situated it's below it's below the constraint number one so it means that the inequality sign is going to be less than if the feasible region was above the constraint it was going to be a greater or equal sign yes it was going to be a greater or equal sign but let's continue and simplify this what do i mean by simplify i mean that your equation your constraint must be written like this a x plus b y less than or equal to c or in that format right so it should be x and y on the left hand side and a constant on the right hand side so we need to simplify this such that on the left i have x and y and then on the right i have a value of c so i'm gonna multiply by a hundred which is the lcd multiply by a hundred multiply by a hundred hundred cancels hundred i'm left with x this hundred cancels this hundred it's y less than or equal to one times hundred it's hundred this is constraint number one refer to the diagram okay next one next slanted um constraint it's constraint number two where a y intercept of 30 and an x intercept of 60. 
So constraint number two, again, we are using the intercept form. It's going to be what? x over 60 plus y over 30. Now, looking at the second constraint, this line, where is the feasible region located? It's located above that line, right? It's located above that line. So the inequality sign is going to be greater than or equal to not 0 but 1. But just what you should um, take note of is that the intercept form always allows a 1 on the, on the right hand side. It's always going to be 1. It's always going to be 1. Okay. Then what is the LCD? What is the LCD between these two fractions? The LCD is going to be the 60 in this case. So LCD is 60. I'm going to multiply by 60, multiply by 60, and multiply by 60 over here. So cancel, cancel. I'm left with x plus what is 60 over 30? That's 2. So it's going to be 2y greater or equal to 60. This is constraint number 2. Constraint number 3, let's label it. Constraint number 3, it's the horizontal line. So do you see that the horizontal line is passing through 70? So it's going to be y. Since the feasible region is below that horizontal line, so it's going to be less than or equal to 70. It's going to be less than or equal to 70. Now, for horizontal and vertical lines, you don't use this one, right? You don't use this one. So it's, for a vertical line, just use the value where the line passes through. For the for the vertical line as well, use the value where the line is passing through. Now for number four, we want the constraint for constraint number four, which is this one, okay? It's this one here. And it passes through what? 40. 40 is on the x-axis. So this means that it's going to be x since the feasible region is to the left of the x value. It's going to be less than or equal to 40. This is our set of constraints. This is our set of constraints. So I'm going to erase this. Yes. I'm going to erase this. All right. Now we have our constraints for, for, for 7.1. Let's answer the second one. 7.2. Yes, could have done that. Let's just erase this whole thing. Okay, 7.2. Okay, 7.2. If the profit on the radius are given by the equation, so this is the profit, which is 4x plus 80y. Calculate by using a coordinate search. Coordinate search. The number of electrical and number of battery operated radios which should be manufactured to maximize the profit so this is the profit equation so you want a set of x and y that can be substituted and producing a maximum profit okay now let's do this let's do this a coordinate search now remember 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 this, remember this, remember this. So your profit, your profit, your maximum profit will take place at one of these vertices, at one of the corners of the feasible region. So it means that you need the coordinates at these corners or at these vertices. So for point A, I'm going to label this as A. This is 0 and 70. For this one, let's call it B. It's 0 and 30. For this one, it's going to be 40 and 10. This one, this was C. And then let's label this as D. That's going to be 40 and 60. 
how am I getting these coordinates? Okay, um, I'm, I'm reading it off from the graph. So this is 40 and 10. D, that's 40 and 60, hence 40 and 60. For this one, it's gonna be E, which the coordinates are 30 and 70, okay? 30 and 70, okay. Let me just list out the coordinates on the side. So A, that is 0 and 70. And then B, that's 0 and 30. And then C, let me move this. This is 40 and 10. C, D, and then D, that's going to be 40 and 60. And then E, that's going to be 30 and 70. Okay, we have all the coordinates. Let's calculate the, the, the profits for each point. So, taking this into consideration, for this point, where does X, I'm substituting 0, and then where does Y, I'm substituting 70? Let's calculate. So that's going to be 40 open bracket 0 plus 80 open bracket times 70. I'm getting 5,600. 5,600 rand. Then for the 40 and 10, I'm getting 2,004. And then for D, 40 and 60. Let me check, let me check, okay, that is 6,400, and then for the last one, 30 and 70, I'm getting 6,800, <coughs> 6,800, all right, Whoa, okay, 0 and 70, this is, what did I do now, what did I do, 0 and 30, all right i was writing in the wrong place this whole time okay let me just fix this let me fix this all right the first one i know it's five thousand six hundred rand next one we calculated this we got two thousand four hundred what about 40 and 10 i made a mistake here guys oh again it's two thousand four hundred okay two thousand four hundred all right, so I think it's obvious from from this point, um, from our calculations that the coordinates producing a maximum profit, the highest profit is the 30 and 70. So now to answer the question, um, they want us to, by using a coordinate search, the number, calculate the number of electrical and the number of battery operated radius that should be manufactured to maximize a profit so you need 30 electrical 30 electrical and another 70 of battery operated battery operated radius okay and then for 7.3, I think we covered this. This would be a, an easy mark. If you were writing this, should it, this would have been an easy mark. So the maximum profit is actually the 6,800. Now this concludes our discussion for question seven. I hope you enjoyed. Check the description box for more recordings that I've done. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.